Who doesn't want to build a helicopter in your garage? We're going to talk to somebody who did just that in the hangar. Hello, I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by Wingfield Aviation. Okay, so let's get to it. We're building helicopters in garages. I think that's just awesome. Um, so I want to just introduce right off the bat, we've got Dick Campbell. Dick, thanks for coming well, up and being Pleasure. on the show. Very Christy. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so Dick, building a helicopter in a garage, I mean, oh man, I'd just love to do that. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, how you uh, got into aviation, and how you decided to build a helicopter. Okay. Um, well, after college, I went to the Marine Corps. I learned to fly in the Marine Corps. I flew A-6 intruders. Oh, wow. And I flew G general aviation along the way. So Aero fixed clubs. wing. I was going to say, so that's was, not a helicopter. So that's a fixed wing guy. And then went into industry. Um, you know, life got in the way. And I finally retired uh, a little over two years ago. Oh, wow. And um, a friend of mine uh, said, well, go get back and get your medical certificate, you know, so you can be my safety pilot. I mean, I was the classic rusty pilot. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my jobs in industry in the aerospace, we were modifying aircraft. I'm an aeronautical engineer by, by background. Hmm. Um, I was uh, building a helicopter for customs, immigration and customs enforcement. And uh, one of the things we had to do as part of the project was go to the factory in Milan, Italy, to test fly the aircraft. So we flew it over the lakes, up in the Alps, landed wherever we want, you know, low altitude. I mean, I was just enamored now by the freedom you had flying a helicopter. So after I got my medical, I said, uh, shoot, I'm going to start flying again, and uh, I'm going to need a flight review. But no, I'm not going to do a flight review. I'm going to go get a new rating. So I said, I'm a, so I went and got my helicopter rating about three years ago. Oh, that's great. Found so a flight a, school. a rusty pilot, you could, you know, go and, and, and work up your, your, your slow speed. Uh, installs and everything else for your BFR, yep. or you could just go get a new rating. Exactly, Love and that. that's what I did. Wow. So I got got my helicopter rating add-on, and of course all these young instructors saying, you know, oh guy, what are you going to do with this rating now that you got it? And I thought, well, I want to fly helicopters. One of the problems with helicopters is they're very expensive, as you probably know. Uh, to rent a helicopter at my flight school was over $300 an hour. Wow. And to buy, if you want to buy a new helicopter, they're a quarter of a million. Wow. You know, so how do you, how do you On the low side. make it economical? So I started looking around, and I figured the best way to be able to enjoy flying helicopters was to buy or build uh, a, an amateur-built helicopter, experimental amateur-built. And there just weren't any available. And I didn't. I was not a builder. I, I mean, I'm an engineer. I'm f figure I'm pretty good with tools and things, but I'm not a builder. And, and I really didn't want to have to build a helicopter. So you had not ever like built you know, an RV6 or nope, anything like nope, that? Nothing like that. Hmm. So I'm looking around, looking on barnstormers and looking for used helicopters and the, the Mosquito appealed to me because of its size, the single seat, um, the cost is, uh, is, is worthwhile, uh, but there just weren't any available. And so if I wanted to fly a helicopter, I'm gonna to have to build my own. So I went down to the factory, talked to them, and, what uh, factory? The factory is called Composite FX. It's in uh, Trenton, Florida, near Gainesville. Uh, they have several different models of mosquitoes, and um, they sell kits. So you buy a kit. You can either buy an ultralight version, which is the true ultralight part ultralight 103. Is that like a helicopter. gyrocopter? No, no, it's a real helicopter, collective, cyclic, wow. the whole bit. Okay. Um, now, if you do not have any helicopter flight training, the factory will uh, charge you more for the kit. They expect you to get flight training. Oh, um, but otherwise, the helicopters they sell do require a helicopter license. There's no such thing as an LSA uh, helicopter. Okay, uh, that's good to know. So, so it either, it's either an ultralight or full-fledged uh, helicopter. So um, one of the options they offer is a factory assist build. So I did not actually not build it in my garage, okay, uh, although yeah. I have a friend in Austin who is building one in his garage. I had a neighbor who did that when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. yeah. A helicopter? Yeah. Fascinated me. Had no wow. idea. Yeah. Yeah, so there are a few kits out there available. Safaris, uh, that I can remember, Rotorway is probably the most popular, just a two-seat helicopter. But they're $150,000 range just for the kit. Uh, the Mosquito runs around 50 grand, depending on the options you want to get. And they offer a piston version and a turbine version. A turbine version? But the turbine is about $25,000 more just for the engine. So uh, even that, you know, gets kind of 
kind of pricey, yeah, but, but still twenty-five thousand for a turbine. I mean, more. That's just for the engine. So when you, you say twenty-five, these are experimental aircraft. So the turbine engine and the Mosquito is a repurposed uh, ground power unit APU. Engine. Okay. And uh, the engine it makes that, sense now. And yeah. the the piston engine in my helicopter is a repurposed snowmobile engine. Wow. <laughs> it's a two-cycle electronic fuel injection, so oil injection, water cooled. And you feel engine. safe. And okay, I've got questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the useful load for this yeah, I was gonna helicopter me, with the... Me, me and fuel. Okay. But he's got a single seater. But it's just a single seat. Right. And I, I should emphasize, little helicopters are not good cross-country aircraft. Oh, I would think I not. mean, we're talking, it's like an ATV or a motocross motorcycle. I mean, that's what you're using it for, to have fun, to go out, fly low level, okay. zoom around. You're, it's not a road tripper. You okay. know, I have a Grumman Cheetah that I use for my cross-country. Ah, you there know. you go. So, um, so the useful load, I have about, I could put about 25 more pounds of baggage. 25 in, in pounds? In a little compartment. But otherwise, I'm full fuel in me, and that's, I'm close How to max gross. How much fuel does it take? So I uh, have 20, uh, 12 gallon tank, burns six gallons an hour, cruises at 70 to 80 miles an hour. So I could fly close to a couple hours before I needed gas. Hmm. Okay, so but, let's go back to the story. You were looking yeah. around. You found the single seat mosquito yes. out of the factory, and, and but you were saying there were some other options. What, what are like the if if I wanted a, a two seater, um, you know, what are the options? You said there was another brand. Oh, there's other kits out there, uh, other manufacturers. Um, a friend of mine has a rotaway in my EAA chapter. Uh, it's a turbine, and uh, he built that. And uh, and that's going to be like the 150 and that's a range. Yes, yeah, I think. Okay. Uh, Latest price I saw on a, on a rotorway is about 150 grand for a kit, you know. And then you have to, Assemble. when you venture into this experimental amateur built world, you have to be prepared to spend the time and allocate the resources to build an aircraft. You know, you, you can start with plan built if you're really adventurous, or or you can buy a kit, which you can do it a little faster. And if you're building it in your garage, you have to acquire machine tools and a lot of other specialized tools. So it's gonna cost um, more and it's than gonna, 150 And it's gonna cost you more than that just to acquire that. Uh, I had a friend who built an RV, it took him seven years. Yeah, you know, so but probably the, the, the fun there was in the journey of building. And that's that's a lot of it. Yeah, not, like I said, I'm, I'm not a builder, I wanted to fly. Okay, right, right. I'm <laughs> so, probably the longest. And that's one of the reasons I, I bought the factory assist option. I went down to the factory and built it on the factory floor. Well, so I had access to their tools, their jigs, and their expertise primarily. So I don't know very, I don't know very much at all about the, the experimental uh, build side of things, but I, I did, we did have somebody on recently, and what's the rule of 51%? Yes. And so when you do the factory build, are you still getting the 51% yes. so that you can be the one to work on it? The FAA provides a uh, checklist, both for fixed wing and for helicopters, where you document the work that uh, was done in the kit, the work that was done by the factory, and the work that you did. And I got credit for about 59%. Okay. Which was, w w which was more know, than the 51. More than, more than the 51. We can do math here. So, uh, you know, and I documented my build with a lot of pictures, uh, kept a log with through the build manual, and then when I had my meeting with the DAR for my airworthiness certificate, I laid all that out and you know he inspected the aircraft and saw all my documentation and I got my airworthiness certificate. So I so yeah. I'm a, and I have an N number registered helicopter. Did you have to um when he inspected it, was there a long list of things you had to correct before he gave you the airworthiness? Nope. So you went in and you went dotted in. your I's and crossed your T's. Yep. Oh that's amazing. Here's a here's a question. So let's say I spent hundred and fifty thousand on a two seater home built helicopter, I go through it, I do it right, I build it, get get my N number. Um, what are those going for if I were to sell it? 150,000. <laughs> Would I get my money back? I don't know. Uh, you might, it depends on how much time is on it. One of the reasons helicopters are so expensive, even commercial helicopters, is when they come to overhaul, almost all the moving parts have to be replaced. So it's not like just overhauling the engine on a fixed wing and you know, doing some cleanup. You, you're, you're replacing half the cost of the, the aircraft when you do that. And so the operating cost, you know, has to be folded into that overall cost. Um, you know, you can buy a, a helicopter that's out of time pretty cheap because it's going to cost you oh, that's interesting. quite a bit to, to get it back up to speed. Just get a new snowmobile and <laughs> put the engine in there. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so tell us about the, the build process and how that went and how long it took you. Um, I dragged my camper down to the factory, parked it on the grounds, and commuted back and forth. Uh, oh, you three built times. it in Florida? In Florida, yeah, yeah at the factory. And um, it took me six weeks. 
from That's when I incredible. first got the kit until I got my airworthiness certificate. So it was like a full-time thing. The log time was six weeks. But, yes, I was working eight, eight, ten hours a day, every day for five, six days a week. And your family was okay with losing? Well, I'm retired, so yeah. my kids are grown. So How did you get it home? <laughs> uh, trailer. Just put okay. it in, hauled it home. In I bet trailer. that was a sight to see. Yeah. So one of the restrictions on uh, when you first get your airworthiness certificate, you're in what's called phase one flight test. Is that where and, you have to get the 40 hours? And you have to have 40 hours logged, and you're restricted. Uh, I have a 25 nautical mile radius around my home airport to, that I can't go go outside of yet. I'm, I have about 15 more hours to go on, on flying off my hours, and then I'm completely unrestricted. I can fly anywhere just like any other end numbered airplane. Anywhere for two hours. As yeah, really has for two hours. Through. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm. You know, going out, flying, I have little different waypoints around in my area, you know, and I plug it in my four flight and I, I zig around and, and go sightseeing and visit and things like that. And then the neat thing about helicopters is you can land wherever you want, as long as you have permission. There are no minimum altitude restrictions on helicopters like there are in fixed wing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a ball. What's the know. highest it can go? You know, I was afraid you were going to ask that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the first question everybody always asks me. How high can it go? Well, well I know helicopters in general don't go that that's high. Right. That's not the point. The point is right. you know, yeah. low and go slow. High and so, but uh, to answer your question, it has about a 9,000 foot service ceiling. Wow. So, okay. so you, you know, if you need it, so if you were flying in the mountains, you know, that would be important if you were flying yeah. at a high altitude, but you're still going to be. Well, you think I you mean, would like the mountains with the snowmobile engine? I mean, most of what we do is sightseeing. You know, when, when I was yeah. I trained in Georgetown, we'd go down to uh, we'd go down to the capital and we'd fly around the the capital and the stadium, the fly up and down the river. You know, a couple hundred feet, all perfectly legal. You know. So is that your typical altitude? You're a couple hundred feet off yep. the ground. Two, Just, up to five hundred. See, that sounds like that. that actually sounds fun. If you had two seats, I'd be all for it. But yeah, well, I mean, and one time me and my instructor flew down to. Uh, uh, Salt Lake Barbecue in Dripping Springs and landed in their vineyard. Hmm. They have a couple of helipads there and went to lunch. Like I, I grew up in classic. Dripping Springs. So talk about a hundred dollar brisket. Yeah. Yeah. Hamburger. yeah. yeah. Well, I grew <laughs> so, up in Dripping Springs. I went to high school there. Yeah. Okay. Back when it was K through 12. So it was a one horse town at that point. Yeah. So fixed. Here's a here's a good one. fixed wing to rotor. Um, I've heard it's a lot easier to go rotor to fixed wing, but I am somebody who really wants to get a rotor. Um, what are the challenges for going from fixed wing to rotor? And also, how much does it cost? The skill set is uh, entirely different. Um, and you have to unlearn some things from fixed wing. Okay. And like basically, what? well, one of my tendencies was when making a turn, I'd put in rotor pedal. Right. Well, you don't have rotor pedals. You have rotor pedals, tail rotor pedals, which is for controlling your slip. You don't put pedal in when you make a turn. And but my natural tendency from flying fixed wing was to do that. And my to, instructor to, to was always saying- To control adverse yaw. Yeah, you don't have that. So my instructor said, get off the pedals, get off the pedals, you know. <laughs> uh, the hardest thing about learning to fly a helicopter is hovering. Um, because everything is, is coupled. All the flight controls are coupled. You move one, the other one changes. So you have to develop this feel for between collective and cyclic and the pedals, um, how to hold it in one place. Because everything you do that's helicopter always begins or ends with a hover. So you have to learn to hover before you can do anything else. Once you get past that, and it probably took me longer to learn how to do that than maybe somebody younger, but uh, uh, there's kind of an aha moment, you know, where, oh, yeah, this is how it works, and then, and then, I mean, it becomes it, muscle then you memory. go from there. So you can do an add-on for, I think, what, 30 hours? Once you already have a, a license, I think the minimum time is 30 hours, but it depends on... But helicopters what, are expensive. But they are expensive. Mm -hmm. So 30 hours. How many hours did it take you to get yours? It took me about 45. 45. Yeah, okay. and I went to... Uh, so I about went 50 to, for you? <laughs> I went to a Part 141 school, which uh, for being a rusty pilot was very helpful because they drilled me on all the new regs and all the changes and brought me up to date with... Um, with everything, so it, it was very helpful. Is that 30 hour, is that for 141, is it different with the 61? No, it's the same, if it's you're doing same. an add-on. Okay, if you're doing an add-on. And it depends on the aircraft you're flying also, there's minimum hour requirements uh, in a particular aircraft. I mean, do you want to get a rotor? I've <laughs> honestly never had a desire to do that. Really, you, so you don't plan to get a rotor? To put it eloquently, helicopters scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I, I'm just being very honest. I mean, no. I've been in a couple and it's been okay, but I was just waiting for that thing to go spinning off or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I consider now uh, for my helicopters, if I have an engine failure, I'm safer in my helicopter than I am fixed wing because. Because of the auto rotate? Because I'm going to auto rotate. I can land just about wherever I need to. 
and uh, and once you do autos and you get comfortable with them, they're probably the scariest thing you're going to do when you're learning. Like stalls, um, fixed wing. You know, you you have plenty of energy. You use, use that energy to get down, pull collective, and sit down. Whereas with fixed wing, you know, we all know what happens when you lose an engine. You, you glide. Got, you, you're a glider, though. Yeah, That's, you're but a glider. you've got to find a place where you can roll out safely and stay away from trees and power lines. So talk to me just stuff. briefly, because we we don't talk about helicopters a lot on the show. Sure. I want to know the pro just a brief overview of auto rotation. Maybe put me at ease. Right. Okay. So at altitude, you have potential energy and kinetic energy, and you trade all of that energy um, as you come down at your best uh, glide speed. Um, so you maintain your glide speed with your cyclic, and you maintain, you keep a, even though the engine has quit, you have a device in the rotor called a sprag clutch, which disconnects the engine from the rotor and allows the rotor to spin freely even if the engine has seized. Okay. So you control the, you keep the rotor at 100% with the collective while you're using that energy you have to come down at your best glide speed. And when you reach the bottom, you flare, and now you have all of this inertia in your rotor disc. You pull collective, which increases your lift, and you just settle down. The wind coming up from <laughs> below will spin your freely, yes. your, your prop. So I fly gyros, and, and we're in that state all the time. Right. So in a gyrocopter, what we do is when, um, when we're about to take off, we'll engage that clutch so that the engine will start driving the propeller, and you get your, 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 your main blade spinning to about 320, 330 um, uh, rotations a minute. And... Is it a minute, a second, a second, uh, whatever. But you, you get your blade spinning, yeah, 300 RPMs probably. and then you let go of the clutch. And at that point, it's, it's free spinning. If you do nothing, it'll slowly, eventually stop. But what happens is you start moving the gyro down the runway with the fan on your back, the prop right. that you have behind you. And the prop starts moving you. The gyro actually angles, the blades are angled slightly back. The rushing wind will keep that spinning going. And so with a gyro, your movement forward keeps a free spinning blade right. going. It's like that children's toy that you spin with that has a right. stick, you know, it'll fly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, so, you don't even really need the pre-rotator. You just need a longer run to get the, Right, right. You could just do it with a long run. Spinning. And in a helicopter, one, you do not have power, and you're descending. You're doing the same thing. You're keeping that rotor spinning. And as long as it has energy in it, you can trade that energy for lift. At the last you, second. At the last second and arrest your rate of descent and sit right down, or oh. in many cases you kind of hit and you skid a little bit. It's all about timing. I guess. Okay. And you have to actually demonstrate that you can do an auto during your flight check. Which I've wondered, how, the, how do you, I guess you just do it in altitude and they say, okay, I want you to level out at a thousand or something? No, we do them in the pattern. Uh, I see know, them doing them all the time. Ground. All the way down? All the way down to the ground. Oh, I, guess you oh, could, I guess you could always engage it. Well, we do power recoveries. Okay. Once you flare and stop your descent, then you bring power back on and, and finish in a hover. Wow. Okay. Is, is the normal. See, this sounds so exciting. I want to go get my rotor. <laughs> you should do that. Put away about uh, 12 or 15 grand. I know. That's, and I that's think, just for the add-on. Yeah. Just uh, like anything, I think I would actually have to go out, try it, and once I realize, okay, this is cool and, you know, we're, we're safe. and Yeah. Do a discovery flight. Oh, there we go. Oh, my gosh. Discovery flight for Christy for rotors. There you have it. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, Dick, thank you so much. And um, uh, you certainly got me fired up. I'm going to start going Googling uh, the different kits. Um, uh, man, I, I think that's just awesome. We're going to see a helicopter in your garage soon, aren't we? Well, uh, uh, there's no room in the garage. but uh, And also, I live pretty close to DFW, so they're not going to be happy with that. But, uh, Dick, thank you so much you for guys. coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We're talking helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. And if you like what you see, please hit that uh, subscribe button. <laughs> so we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time in the hangar.